Good morning. I'm Frank Kaufman. I'm doing a piece this morning of, of entitled Real Virtue. Once again, as many people know who listen to me, there's a younger friend of mine who has functioned as a teacher for me and for many. And uh, the special thing I like about reading his stuff is unusual angle, the, the odd things he catches that strike me as int intuiting key truths in ways that surprise me or that I would never think of. And today was another one. And so I just want to share on that one because I think it, it carries a lot of, it carries a lot of real reconstruction of thought for people who are interested in trying to be better people. He's in the middle of talking to one of these, some group of people, some group of idealists and hits upon this subject almost out of the blue, but hits upon it. And he goes, I'm reading here. There is a way to earn things. Earning is important to you. Why? Because you have to make a living. That's personal earning. Yes, there is the concept of that. But shouldn't there be a concept of universal earning? What's that? I guess that's the opposite of personal earning. Something that can benefit something greater than yourself. In the extreme sense, humanity. That's big, but hey, why not? We have to at least talk about it, think about that concept, and why not make it exist? Is that a sense of idealism? Is that how idealism is born? Should that matter to everybody? You think about earnings, you have to think about that too. Not just you, but all, if you believe in God. Otherwise, why would you want to talk about God? So the thing that struck me here why I wanted to chat about it briefly is that there is the side of every person, I think probably every person ever born, that wants to make a difference in the world and that has a side of us or a capacity or, an, or a natural impulse that we care about things far greater than ourselves. So, for example, all what are called uh, SJWs, social justice warriors, Social justice warriors is a nickname given to people who have concerns for something larger than themselves. It may be all, quote-unquote, people of color, or it may be women or transgender people or whales or the environment. or These are things which indicate that we're not living in a selfish manner, but rather our lives and our passions and our concerns and how we invest ourselves and how we uh, commit ourselves and orient our lives has to do with larger concerns, with larger demographics, with larger groups of people. Essentially, it's evidence that I don't live selfishly. And uh, the name that the name SJWs or social justice warriors is handled by some as incriminating or a negative, and what's associated with that way of life is often called virtue signaling. And virtue signaling would suggest that an SJW is living in the comfort of their first world life. Their iPhone 12 is slower today than it was yesterday. They fall apart for a week and a half, but then somehow manage to wake up and condemn everybody on earth for not caring enough about plankton or something like that. That's the caricature or, or the, the critique of SJWs. But, and so what's called there is virtue signaling, meaning I've not really... Uh, involved myself or engaged in the degree of personal sacrifice in any way to support other than my uh, just desire to condemn others for not being as enlightened, caring, or compassionate as myself. And this is part of the reason why this uh, reading from my, from my uh, friend and teacher here struck me as so interesting is that he latches onto or catches 
this innate quality of being human and, and the demand of being human that really does genuinely require that we care about things larger than ourselves and that we not live entirely selfishly. So although there will be, because of, especially because of the political divide, there's this, there's this kind of uh, way of d diminishing or criticizing SJWs. I'll leave that aside. It's not a concern of mine at all here. The only reason why I brought it up is to indicate that there is in all people the desire to be significant, uh, to be unselfish, A, eh? and to be significant in ways greater than the mere vicissitudes or progress or benefits to my own selfish existence. So that's a positive thing. It's a good thing. And that is the impulse that arises in people that end up on crusades uh, for the betterment and for the welfare of groups and things and entities and realities larger than themselves that are global in nature or universal in nature and compassionate in nature. And so the real question is how to be genuinely raising oneself up out of the strong force of selfishness that obtains in every life, including our life, my life, and how to harmonize that with the innate and universal desire to express care, compassion, and actually be an effective source and force of change on a larger scale that is an indicator, not only an indicator, but that is in fact evidence that I've risen above the natural animalistic and widespread human uh, habit of self-orientation to in increase my capacity to live my life that's genuinely for the sake of others. It's that synapse, it's that gap, it's that it's the difference between someone who, if someone is capable of observing your life or my life as an essentially coddled life, an essentially selfish life, and that all I do is talk about how great my love is for this group or that, or for this minority or that. Clear study or clear observation of how I live doesn't indicate that I am doing either of two things. One is giving any evidence of being genuinely sacrificial, doing without in ways that that diminish my comfort and my pleasures and e eating crappier stuff, not getting my hair cut done as often as I wish, uh, uh, clothes don't hang as right. And, and the only reason why I do those things, not because I have to, not because I'm poor, but because that I've given away too much of my stuff for the sake of the group I claim to be caring about or cause I claim to be caring about. That even my children are angry at me because I'm not home enough. Why? Not because I'm out on the golf course or not because I'm out in Mercedes-Benz uh, 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 shopping uh, 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 floor, you know, the, the showroom floor, trying to pick my next car or something. But there, I'm not home enough because... My, I'm, I'm losing my time, losing my life, losing what little time I have in order to uplift and benefit the groups or the entities or the environmental concerns that I genuinely care about. So the problem is to merely assume that because we have passing sentiments and emotions that are innately concerned with the welfare of disadvantaged and downtrodden, that's built in, that's a given. To imagine that your concern is superior to any others is just my is just myopic. It's just a form of hubris or arrogance. That's why there's a, that's why there's a negative reaction to many people who are who are out preaching and condemning and judging others for not having the same degree of enlightened wonderment of how just how incredibly great I am, by because I'm able to tweet or post or something like that. And so what we're really looking for as people who are serious about uh, being good be, and being helpful is how to, tr how to leap across two particular things. The synapse, the, the, the self-development and growth 
what how does my where does my selfishness find its power what is it rooted in how is it changed what's the regimen to diminish that of course i want a better phone that's not a crime everybody wants a better phone the guy with the best phone in the world wants a better phone there's nothing criminal there but how to how to meet that normal everyday reality and suppress or diminish or transform that into the same passion that the phone the better phone is not as important as the welfare of the group i'm claiming to be or or elements that i'm claiming to be concerned about so that's a matter of internal growth that's a matter of changing yourself what is a regimen to change yourself like when somebody gets up in my face and starts yelling and screaming at me about how I'm inferior in my compassion to some group or another, my main question, I don't say it out loud, but my main question is, that's interesting. What did you do to your, what, what regimen do you follow that has made you rise above innate, normal, everyday human selfishness that you've managed to become so superior in your compassion? How did you attain that what do you do on a daily basis do you get up early do you pray do you meditate do you, do you, is there something you read do you do push-ups is there a pill you take what do you do how did you get to be so great as you are this is a big question of mine and then the other thing is the obvious thing oh let me see your books let me see your daily left let me see what you bought let me see where let me see your uh, like what you do for this uh, group that you're up in my face telling me that I don't have sufficient compassion or care about. So, so there's two things there. One is how to, how to improve myself to move out of the natural abundance of selfishness that I have into the natural uh, uh, pa uh, fiery passion to help others, A. Eh? And B, uh, what do I actually do? And that's why this reading this morning has so much appeal to me because this friend of mine, whom I always say comes up with these great angles on things, uh, hits, hits on an important synapse. He hits on earnings. And earnings is always thought of as uh, a natural part of maintaining myself. I need earnings. That's why I go to work. That's why I suffer for some fool who's like making uh, rubber bands or making, uh, making uh, uh, sugar-filled uh, uh, baked beans that is going to addict little kids and give them no nutrition. Or That's why I go all day long, eight hours a day, giving all of my days to some dude or some lady who doesn't even have any great social thing in her life. She's just making more money than me, and I, and I fulfill some little part of what they're trying to do. And uh, that's earnings. That's earnings. It's legitimate. I have to do it. It's a job I could get. I'm not really there to decide how much how much change in the world that this, that this person, my boss, is making. I just have to earn. And so my buddy says here, the earnings is important to you. Why? Because you have to make a living. You literally have to make a living. If you have kids, you got to feed them on top of it. Uh, so it's, he goes, that's a personal thing. Yes. But he goes, but what about, a, what about universal earning? And this, this is what caught my interest. The, see, he goes, what is that? It's, it, it seems like it just popped up in his mind. Universal earnings. There's some people who talk about universal, what this, this idea of everybody just give everybody money. But universal earning, that means that you're laboring away. And the, and the income, he goes, what is that? He goes, I guess that's the opposite of personal earning. Something that can benefit something greater than yourself in the extreme sense humanity so there so we know what earnings is like we know that that sucks we know that going getting up in a cold morning in the dark and going out to labor away for some guy uh whose cause you don't even care for we we know what that is like and so and so th that universal earnings is that that i is translating in concept the idea of going out to work that crappy reality and i shouldn't speak about work like that i like i like personally i like work it's enjoyable to me but i'm just kind of giving it that caricature so we know what earnings is like we know what getting up and going to work is like we know the monotony of day-to-day -day like work even no matter how much we love our work to try to stay inspired about it and try we know what earnings is like it's, it's, it's perpetually and incessantly a self-oriented thing. And it's precisely that that he hits upon. 
to make it to make it a, your your SJW cause. What about earning something greater than yourself? How about everybody? He goes. At least we have to think about that. Isn't that some sort of idealism? That's isn't that how idealism is born? It should matter to everybody. It should matter to everybody. And so when I say that I'm for this group or that, if I'm for that downtrodden or un injustice suffering group or that, or if I want to change that or improve that, that I actually go to, I actually invest in the classic trade-off. I labor and I work and I have earnings and those earnings are for all. So this idea of universal earnings is kind of a linchpin that captures, somehow to me captures, uh, it's a kind of a, a, a magic center of good old fashioned hard work, hey, don't complain, don't wait for the government to bail you out, go out there, get on the, you know, go out there and pull yourself up and get, go to work and earn your money or something. This is kind of a classical old fashioned conservative kind of and then this idea of caring for all and universal and caring and uh, having virtue and the two come together right there conceptually when he talks about universal earning so i think it's an incredible concept i think it's highly applicable personally and uh, this is what inspired me to offer these few thoughts uh, this morning on how to harmonize our our natural self-orientedness, even our healthy self-orientedness, with our natural uh, public-mindedness uh, and our natural universal compassion for all. I think he hit on a great concept that can really start to become a um, translate into instruments and ways and techniques that really convert our compassion beyond virtue signaling into genuine virtue. Okay, thanks a lot for listening. Very happy to be with you today. I'll talk to you again soon.